So far in this React course, we have only worked with local data. That means we have created and used variables and arrays which gets managed and stored in the browser's memory. But in this section, we are going to learn how we can connect our React application to a backend. That means to a database. Because in a real world application, we always store data in a database. And we can fetch data from that database and display it in our React application. For example, if we are creating an online shop, we might want to store our product related data in a database. In the same way, we might want to store our application users in a database. So in this section, you will learn all about storing and fetching data from a database from your React application. But before we start working with databases, I want to make one point clear. Always remember that browsers should never interact with the database directly. That means when we use a client side language like JavaScript or a library like React, since they are executed in the browser, we should never write codes in JavaScript or React to directly communicate with the database. Let's say you have a React application and you have a database in the backend. This database can be a SQL database or a NoSQL database. And you want to connect to this database and store data in this database. Now, you should never store or fetch data directly from the database, from your client-side application. Why? Because when we try to connect to a database, in order to connect to that database, we need to provide database credentials. And if we are trying to connect to that database from our client-side application, where we are using JavaScript code, this JavaScript code is executed in the browser and it can be accessed and seen by your application users. So your application users can simply open the developer tool and see the JavaScript code of your application. And there, if you are using the database credentials, then your user will come to know about your database credentials and it can make your application vulnerable to hackers. And that's why we should never connect to our database from our client side application. In addition, connecting directly to your database might bring other problems like performance issues, but still the biggest problem is the security problem. So if you should not directly connect to your database from your client side application, then how you should interact with the database? Well, for that, you can create a backend application running on a server and this backend application can communicate with the database. Now, since this backend application is running on a server, your users will not have access to this backend code. And in this way, you can safely store and use database credentials in the backend application because this backend code can't be viewed by your users. This backend code is on a different server and the users of your React application will never be able to see that code. So here, instead of directly interacting with the database, your React application will talk to the backend application, which should be exposing different APIs to talk to the database. And in this way, you have a safe connection to the database because the connection details is stored in the backend application. And to communicate with the backend application, no security related details are needed. Okay, so this is how you should connect to your database from your client side application. Now, in this course, we are not going to create any database or any backend application because that is out of the scope of this course. So what we are going to do is we are going to use an existing backend solution provided by Google, which is called as Firebase. And Firebase is not just a database solution. It provides entire backend solution with APIs to work with Firebase database. And it is perfect backend solution to learn HTTP requests and responses with React. Firebase is free to get started with and we can send different type of requests there and we can easily see the changes which we make through these requests. In Firebase, we can create a database, we can store data in that database, we can fetch data and we can also update and delete data from that database. Therefore, it's a perfect solution which we can use for learning purpose. Now, in order to get started with Firebase, go to this URL firebase.google.com and there you need to log in using your Google credentials. Once you are logged in, you can click on this get started button. And on this page, we can create a new project. You can see I already have one project. But if I want to create another project, I can click on this add project button. Here we can provide a name for the project. Let's call it React HTTP tutorial. Let's click on this continue button. And here I'm going to unselect this option, this enable Google Analytics for project. We don't want to enable Google Analytics for this project. Let's click on this create project button and it will start creating our project. Let's wait for some time. So the project is created. Click on this continue button. 
and here select this build option and now we want to create a real-time database so select this option and click on this create database button here we need to select a location where our real-time database will be stored so I'm going to keep this default selected location and I will click on this next button now here we have two options either we can create this database in locked mode or we can create this database in test mode if we create the database in locked mode in that case in order to interact with the database the user will have to authenticate himself but if we select this test mode in that case user does not need to authenticate himself okay so here we will add authentication letter for now we want to work in test mode so that we can send request and receive response from this database without being restricted normally we would want to protect our database from unwanted access in that case we can select this locked mode but here since we want to learn about HTTP request and response without being restricted that's why I have selected this test mode now click on this enable button so our database is created and this database currently does not have any data also let me remind you again that firebase is not just a database it is a complete backend solution that also offers a database now in this database this URL which you see this is the endpoint which we are going to work with so using this endpoint we are going to add data in a database we are going to fetch data from the database we are going to update data in this database and we are also going to delete data in this database so this URL is very important this is the endpoint which we are going to use to work with this database as I mentioned earlier we do not connect to the database directly instead we can use APIs or endpoints to work with that database and it is this URL it is this endpoint which we are going to use to work with this database so this is all from this lecture in the next lecture let's see how we can add data in this database using this endpoint